Hello, on behalf of the Chest Wall Injury Society, welcome to the SSRF Surgical Exposure video series. In this video, we'll be focusing on the subscapular exposure. My name is Dr. Andrew Dobin, and I am thrilled to be sharing this information with you today. The subscapular exposure can seem rather intimidating, especially when there's a concomitant scapular fracture. However, this region is vitally important to the overall contour of the chest wall, and learning the exposure and management of fractures in this area will improve the effectiveness of both you as a surgeon and the technique of SSRF. With subscapular exposure, there are three key points to remember. These include, number one, the subscapular region can be accessed anteriorly using either muscle sparing or transecting the latissimus and posteriorly through the oscillatory triangle. Number two, using a strong self-retaining retraction system to elevate the scapula will be helpful. Number three, the reduction, contour, and apposition of the plates is imperative. Any high riding hardware or fractures in this region is at risk for scapula rubbing with rotational movement of the arm in the postoperative period and a scapula fracture combined with hardware rubbing can cause significant patient discomfort and dissatisfaction. Remember that your CWIS membership gives you access to our internal Slack chat, so don't hesitate to reach out to other SSRF experts for specific case questions and real-time advice. If you're not a member and want more information about the Chest Wall Injury Society, please visit our website at cwisociety.org. Now, Let's step into the lab with our expert team to demonstrate these principles. In this video, we are privileged to have Drs. Tom White and John Mayberry. Welcome to the anatomic portion of the lab. Today, we are going to look at the posterior approach. As I mentioned earlier, this can be done both anteriorly and posteriorly, but here we're going to do posterior with Drs. White and Mayberry. So thank you for joining me today, gentlemen. Dr. White, would you mind explaining to me what you're doing right now? Good morning, Andy. Um, the, this incision is, uh, is, provides ready access to subscapular fractures, and it's one we use uh, routinely. Um, it, the important landmarks are the spine, the line of the spine, midline, and the uh, tip of the scapula, which is easily palpable here in this specimen, and the medial border of the scapula. I typically split this difference to start my incision and curve it around the scapula like this, centering it over the triangle of auscultation, which we will expose for you momentarily. This incision can be shorter than this, but for purposes of exposure and demonstration today, we're going to be a little more generous than usual with our incision. But that's, that's the orientation. And you have this uh, patient position prone, but is there another technique to do this, or do yes. you always do it prone? Yeah, well, you can do this, you can uh, use the same incision and, g and gain the same exposure in a more lateral orientation. This, this is my preferred position, which is prone with a little bit of a bump, sort of semi-prone. So a standard skin incision is fashioned here. Thank you, John. Down to the muscle. A little bit of flapping is, can uh, actually aid with exposure, but uh, we do much less of this than we used to. I think that's true of most rib surgeons now. Avoiding this extensive subcutaneous dissection uh, is, is nice because you don't uh, get seromas and there's no need for a subcutaneous drain typically. But you do want to expose the muscles here. Let's put in some self-retaining attractors, John. So the ascultory triangle is the window to the subscapular space and the anatomy here is pretty straightforward and very consistent. What you'll see first is the medial or inferior border of the trapezius and the superior border of the latissimus which actually runs is oriented in this fashion so and in conjunction with the uh, medial border of the scapula you have a triangle. That triangle is covered by avascular areolar tissue that can be just in, simply incised. Here we have a little bit of underlying rhomboid muscle. I try not to uh, 
divide the rhomboid. The trapezius can be sectioned or divided for a few centimeters to gain additional exposure, but in general I try to avoid, we try to avoid dividing the rhomboid. So this is the triangle of auscultation and with some gentle finger dissection this space can be readily entered and expanded. It's completely avascular and we're in effect lifting the scapula in the subserratal plane, the subserratus plane, and that can be developed all the way over to the axillary midline and up to the second rib without, without difficulty. So I don't think I can overstress the importance of having a static, strong, uh, self-retaining retra retractor system for this exposure. This just makes life so much easier. Here we're demonstrating the Bookwalter retractor. So when you sweep the space to expose it for, ex for tractor placement, be careful. Sharp edges from the subscapular root fractures can do a number on you, so be careful. Sometimes a single retractor blade will get you what you need, but in this case we're going to put in two. It's impressive to me every time I do it how, much, how good this exposure can be with, with careful preparation and adequate dissection. Well, as we're demonstrating here, when you have a well-placed self-retaining retractor system, the exposure can be quite, uh, quite elegant. These are the fractured and displaced fractures, uh, ribs five, four, and three. Three is starting to curve away. If using a uh, geographic reference, this is the equator. This is the, this is the uh, North Pole up here. And so the chest wall is curving away from you, making exposure more difficult and hardware placement uh, challenging, but it certainly can be done. This exposure also is, um, leads you quite a ways anterior and all the way back to the uh, paraspinal position. So uh, really a very nice window to the chest wall. Dr. White, can you talk about the angle of the chest wall as it goes lateral as well? Well, these ribs are running, they're, running, they're diving away from you, uh, your line of sight, and they're also curving away from you uh, to the north. So there's a complex pattern to the rib. And when you fashion the hardware and put it on these ribs, you have to be very precise. Uh, it's critically important in this position because you don't want any uh, disparity between the, any undue disparity between the shape of the plates and the ribs un in this subscapular location. So the reduction of these ribs is usually relatively straightforward and involves uh, lifting the, the depressed segment and perching the ribs in an anatomical alignment. Does that help with the visualization of the third rib once those are reduced? Yes. And I usually reduce from bottom to the top, but I, I know uh, many surgeons will go the, go the other direction. Rib three is fractured here, but it's not displaced now. It's now lined up. Rib four is aligned well, and rib five as well. We're going to clean these ribs off a little better for uh, better exposure. And that's done by just simply elevating, either with cautery or sharply, the soft tissues on top of the periosteum. You need approximately three and a half to four centimeters of exposed rib for most of the available hardware systems. And how important is the apposition of the plate to the bone edge in this location? Well, it's extremely important here, as I mentioned, because the, the overriding scapula, that, that uh, interface between the scapula and the chest wall is, is, is important. If anything, if your hardware is proud uh, in this location, then you're setting yourself up for a chronic inflammatory condition there. And Dr. Mayberry has, uh, uh, has presented data on that at our recent summit meeting. And the concomitant scapula fracture uh, only um, causes that to be more exaggerated, correct? Yes, we have some, uh, I think we all have a, a gestalt or a feeling from clinical experience that the combination of subscapular fractures and, and overlying scapular fracture is a, is, a, is a different clinical condition that predisposes the patient to morbidity. So it's, it's very important that you fix these ribs as precisely and accurately as you can. The other aspect of this incision is, it's a, is the exposure of the posterior rib ribs from rib three down to typically rib seven or eight. And, and if you're going to do uh, rib blocks, anesthetic blocks in the operating room, the exposure for that technique is right along the back here and it's, it's, it's uh, optimized with this exposure. 
One of the uh, benefits of avoiding muscle division and rib fracture repair is that you don't have to repair them on the way out. So closure becomes uh, significantly simplified. I typically do not place any sort of drain underneath the scapula in this space. A chest tube, uh, of course, but no, uh, no wound drain is required. The triangle of auscultation can be closed with absorbable suture as, as we do with all of our other uh, chest wall exposures. And the wound can be closed with a subcutaneous layer and then the skin, skin closure of your choice. Excellent, thank you.